Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Drummer's Education Connection. Hello. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. This is episode 33. Can you believe it? 33 of these. It is May 25th, 2021. And I am here with three of the greatest guys in the world. My partners in crime here, Jeremy Steinkohler, Chip Ritter, Bart Ropley. <laughs> Welcome to deck. And we are super honored. Bra Bart, can you do a drum roll for our guest? Sure. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sharon Ratta. All right. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, man. I'm so excited to be here, guys. This is so fun. I'm so excited. <laughs> we are just so honored to have you, Sharon. Our good friend, Kelly Ray Tubbs, um, introduced Sharon and I. And um, I saw this video of you drumming and it was at your wedding or you were just wearing a wedding dress. I think it was at your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yep. you don't wear a wedding dress to all your gigs? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's her shtick, man. That's yeah, her right. <laughs> oh, man, please. Yeah. And, and, and I just, I, I was just blown away by your playing. And it just had such flow and ease and smoothness. And I said, there it is, man. There, there's, there's a future, future person who we're really going to know about in, in the drum world. So we are honored to get your insights. And I just already encourage everybody to look up Sharon Ransom, look her up on your Facebook, look her up on your Instagram, YouTube. Uh, but you're going to be seeing things, things from Sharon. Um, Sharon, so, so welcome. By the way, Sharon, do you have that video handy? Uh, of, me, I have of me drumming? Of me on the drums. Uh, yeah. Really quick, yeah. So Just so we could put things in perspective right away that we're, we're dealing with a cold-blooded killer on the drums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. I uh, saw her throwing this. I saw her throw the stick up in the air and catch it. I got all jealous. It was cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw that. I saw that, and I said, "Huh? I wonder if she knows Chip." Yeah. <laughs> hey, now you know what? My yeah. question though is for Chip: Is he going to start wearing a wedding dress now at his gigs? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, he, yeah. I have the yeah. Did you want me to just pull up the video? Oh, yeah, yeah, put it up, put it up. We want to see it. Share screen. That'd be awesome. All right, so good. Okay, work already. okay yeah. sounds good. I've never done this, so let me know if this uh, this works here. All right, we're we're live. Um, we always just Sharon. Just, you got to um, press the share button at the oh, bottom. The share button. At the very okay. button. All right, share for Sharon. Share screen. Okay. Uh, uh it says oh. It says that I have to do like a privacy thing. Okay. So oh, I might have to do oh, oh, the technology. Yeah. Well, while you're figuring that out, sure. Yeah. It's is a very active um, musician. She is plays with a lot of different bands. I'm excited to hear about that. Um, she's done a lot of publicity for Canadian tourism. We're really excited to hear that. And she is one super busy teacher. Um, I'm I'm always excited, you know. Uh, I had some book sales from from odd places like like England or just you know, and then Arizona and then Canada, and then I and I go to find out that these are all Sharon students, and so you are teaching people <laughs> all over the world, and so right. it's going to be exciting to get your insights on on teaching and your thoughts for your students too. For sure, yeah, no, like my students absolutely love your book. First of all, like the idea of having. A bunch of drum beats that are um, uh, like you know at their level to work at, and then having a list of songs. My students love yep. that because they want to be able to play songs right away. And then I, yeah, it's, it's helpful for me to be able to show them that, and then show them the theory as we're learning the music. So it's it's awesome. I highly recommend it. Yep, that's a great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so yeah, love those books. Fantastic. Oh, you guys. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Sharon, That's Rick awesome. said something. I got a question for you. Um, Rick said something about you being, uh, you know, doing a commercial for Canadian tourism and and stuff like that. And uh, and he also said, you know, people are going to start hearing about you and very soon on the national level, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us about this commercial 
that's yeah. uh, happening for you for Canadian tourism and what you did. I want to hear about sure. it. So you guys are actually the very first people to know about this. I've had to keep this a secret uh, wow. since November. Um, so this is actually my very first time explaining what, what is happening with this uh, commercial. So um, because we've been in lockdown because of COVID and everything, uh, tourism has really taken a toll here in Canada, obviously, uh, because of lockdowns and whatnot. And so this commercial is actually a way to start campaigning for uh, Canadian tourism to start back up again. Canada is starting to reopen uh, here in the summertime, and we've put in place a plan to start reopening things and, and whatnot in the next few months. And so this campaign uh, that I've been asked to be a part of is a way to uh, encourage people from all over to start traveling to Canada again uh, to kind of help uh, help us out here. So uh, this commercial actually just launched today uh, wow. and is actually uh, um, going to be on national uh, television starting at the beginning of June. Uh, but it's on social media on uh, Explore Canada, uh, on uh, Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and things like that. So, so awesome. I've actually, Sharon, I've actually got the yeah. video queued up. I okay. just found it. Is it okay if I share yeah, it on sure. our podcast right now? Yeah, for sure. All so right. Let's see this. Yet. This is the very first time it's coming out. So here it is. Yeah. World okay. premiere. World premiere here Woo! on the deck. Let's see if this works. It looks like um, it's Canada Keep Exploring. Canada Keep Exploring. Is, that's right. That's yeah. the Facebook group. Cool. Right. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Are, you guys, are you guys seeing this? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Here we go. Woohoo. Give us volume. More volume. That's up, maxed out. Oh, we hey. got nothing. We uh, can't hear it. Yeah, can't hear it. Looks cool. <laughs> uh, we, need, we need to make sure your screen did you include the audio thing um it didn't offer me that option on stream there's a checkbox for audio i saw yeah there is a checkbox for audio i saw it too all right hold on one second one second that's probably quiet because people that use this platform are usually stiffs wearing suits doing meetings <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm wearing my I'm wearing my new Elvis shirt that brought that <laughs> Sam brought me home. Shirt, Isn't that cool, man? That's a yeah. hey, Sharon, cool shirt, man. Oh, Sharon, can people can people get your t-shirts on your website or something yet? Do you got merch going on? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so on ransomdrumlab.ca, you can get uh, some drawstring bags. Uh, t-shirts are there. Uh, so it's all on my website, and also you can register for lessons. It's it's all kind of on that website. So you can uh, I need one of those shirts. Ransomlab.ca. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, ransomdrumlab.ca. That's right. Ransom drum lab. Got it. Let's try it one more time. What? Can you hear that? No. no. Crap. Aww. All right, we're just going to watch Aww. it. That's, cool. Aww. That's okay. It looks great. They're in a big, there, there's a, there she is. There's hiking through the woods. There's a horse. Look at the horse. There she is. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, you already got seven <clears throat> seven thousand one hundred views. That's fantastic. Oh my wow. gosh. Look that's at her go. Great. Is that you playing, Sharon? Yeah, that's me. Yep. Holy so crap. Like Hold on. I gotta figure out how to share this audio. Yeah, I wanna hear this, man. You're you're <laughs> killing me, Jeremy. I mean, I'm killing myself, man. Oh, Hold on a second. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh my god. So funny. Oh, man. So okay, so Sharon, well, yeah. while while Jeremy's doing that, how many uh, how many drum students do you see a week? So right now I have about thir over thirty. Great. Uh, and uh, because of the lockdown, I've had to have some students take a pause. But uh, right now I have about thirty. Generally, I have about like a thirty five or so. Uh, usually within the week. So yeah, it's a lot That's of fun. I, I love it. <laughs> That's great. When you, uh, so with COVID, did you switch over to doing online lessons? Are you doing online lessons too, or, or what all yeah. are you doing? So I am doing online lessons. What's so funny was that I actually had already been preparing to teach online drum lessons because I came up with this idea to do, you know, uh, online drum lessons, use my uh, drum transcribing uh, program on my computer to screen share and teach my students that way. And also view the, like I had this all set up. And then when I announced that that was happening, I think it was the day or two after COVID happened uh, oh, officially yeah. here in Canada. And so then everyone was scrambling to do online drum lessons uh, and piano lessons and things like that. But I had already been set up that I was going to do it anyways. So it was kind of funny how it worked out that way. But um, yeah, so I've been teaching online uh, and uh, in person 
uh, online just started this past uh, year. So since last, uh, since last March. So yeah, it's been, it's been good. It's been a lot of fun. So uh, it's great. Sure. Well, you, sure. what, how are you getting all these students all over, all over the world? Yeah. So, okay. So a lot of it is because of the commercial, like the, uh, the Hollywood one with the big blue dress. Uh, so uh, I got a lot of students from there because uh, that commercial was to advertise Drummer Girls United, which is a Facebook group on Facebook mm -hmm. for women who play the drums. And so because of that, it grew from about, I think, 2,000 people to over 6,500 people um, wow, for that wow. commercial. And then they contacted me for lessons because of that. And then other people kind of heard about it. And then it was word word of mouth. So um, and I'm also the only drum studio in my city. So um, that's also the other reason as well. So. Oh, that, that is, is great. I, I, um, I love that, that Facebook group. I wish I could be part of it, but understand that I, that, uh, yeah, that's a great group. That is, I think it's just a great network for, for, <laughs> for all about half of my students are women and they are all on that group. Oh, and great. They, that's awesome. they all know you and know of you and follow you. And, um, I, I just think it's fantastic and inspiring. And, um, can you guys hear oh it now? My gosh, there's awesome. so many great no. drummers. Hold on. It looks incredible, though. It looks incredible. Real. Do you yeah. now this this? Uh, do you know Neil LaFortune? No, I don't. Neil's Neil's from Canada, so I just I was just okay. curious if you're aware of him. He's uh, uh, so so he's a I he's another really good Neil. friend of ours. And yeah, I heard he's, something. Up. Oh. oh, do we have Sam? Oh, whatever you're doing, turn it up. We got Sam. There we go. There we go. Okay, go All back right. to the beginning now. There we go. Oh, my God. It's killing me. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. That's cool. Let's make sure we post that link to the DEC page. How do I get that link? <laughs> uh, so that is on Facebook. Facebook, okay. Uh, it's on uh, Canada, Explore Canada, or what was that? Rick, what was the one that you mentioned uh, there? Yeah, it is uh, Canada Keep Exploring, it's called. On Canada Facebook. Keep Exploring, that's right. Yep. Yep. That's the one. Hey Jeremy, we uh, a second ago it went to a thing that said exit full screen, so I don't know. I'm not sure what all everybody else saw. All yeah, right, well I did, I did my best. Yeah. Yep. So okay, we tried. We tried. <laughs> that's we all tried. Right. Yeah. Well, that's so fantastic that you got to do that. That is so cool. That is thank awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So what they did actually for that commercial was they got me to travel to Toronto, and then I brought my Gretsch drum set to uh, to the the commercial because they asked. Uh, if I could bring my kit, but what they did was they actually like um, put so like a, a movie dust all over my drum sets, as well as like covered all of the uh, batter heads and everything to make it look really beat up because they wanted me to look like a street drummer, but in a big dress. Yeah. So that, was yeah. that was like the character that I was playing for this commercial, which was so <laughs> fun. I I still have movie dust on my drum set now. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. it's good. It, it was a lot of fun. So yeah. So Sharon, I wanted to ask you, I'm a good friend of Tammy Mitchell Woods of the Drummers okay. Girls United. Can you tell us a little bit about that group and how you got in touch with her? For sure. Okay, first of all, I love Tammy. I actually met her uh, in, in LA when we did the commercial together uh, for the first time in person. Um, but I actually found her group just randomly on Facebook as I was searching through female drummer groups, just because there's not really that happening a lot around here. And actually, personally, I don't know very many female drummers even around this area, really, uh, except for my, my students now, which is super cool. Uh, but anyway, I uh, I got in touch with her and uh, we had started to uh, get 
chatting and everything about uh, the fact that we were both traveling to LA. Uh, so this was about two years after I had joined the group and that group had like grown so much. And initially I had found it super encouraging. And even still now it's like even more encouraging because there's so many more female drummers on there who are just so supportive and uh, are totally cool with wh whatever stage of drumming that you're at. So we have basics mm -hmm. and beginner students all the way up to professionals. We have like young kids, like uh, young women who are like seven years old six years old playing drum covers and uh it's so fun to be able to watch my news feed as i uh scroll through and see uh the different female drummers that are around the world so if you're That's a female cool. drummer out there definitely uh look up drummer girls united it's amazing and tammy's an amazing administrator for that group too so yeah one of the things i noticed about the i read a couple interviews of yours and one of the things i noticed is this theme of of just having fun on the drums Right. You yeah. You seem so so passionate about it. How do you how do you transfer that over to your students? Do you how do you encourage your students? You said something about making sure that they don't compare themselves to other drummers and stuff like that. So could you elaborate a little bit about that? For sure. So honestly speaking, I think personally I've had a, a really hard time growing up as a female drummer because I've always had different uh I guess like uh ex expectations or already assumptions uh, already thrown at me and so i had to grow up with this mindset of you know what i have to realize that other people may not see me as a drummer as i walk into a music store and i ask about a drum set for example and I i've actually had it where people have said oh that doesn't exist like a certain drum thing or whatnot and i've had to be like okay you know what like that is totally fair i know it does exist <laughs> or like whatever and had to kind of have this mindset of like you know what i i have i am responsible for how i carry myself and my attitude towards other people as well as attitudes towards myself so mm -hmm. i can be critical about my drumming ability and where i'm at as a drummer or i can encourage myself to realize hey you know what i was really bad at this about a month ago and i've improved like exponentially since a month later and the reality is is that you know what that is great because then you're moving little steps and all those little steps add up right and right. so with my students i i constantly see students who are struggling or they're you know they they feel like you know oh, i'm not doing a good job at this and i'm constantly having to remind them and say hey you know what everyone is at different levels uh when it comes to drumming i'm constantly taking lessons myself because i know that there are things that i need to improve on but look at all the things that you've learned since this past year like you did not know how to do all these things over the past five months and look where you are now and i've found that students have really lit up when i've said stuff like that or i've encouraged their parents to also be as encouraging as well to them uh, because it helps them to see themselves in a light that's positive rather than negative, right? And critical. That, that really helps to build their self confidence. I love that. That's yeah, great. That's awesome. for sure, hundred percent. So, yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. So, anyways, and then on top of that too, I just try to keep drum lessons really fun because I want them to enjoy themselves too, right? So, uh, yep. yeah, that's how I conduct my lessons, anyways, as best as I can. Yeah. <laughs> that nice. is great. That's, that's great. great. I love that. I always I call that the think backwards thing. You know, that's uh, you know. You know, you what you're doing now, what you can play right now, you couldn't play two months ago. That's yeah. that's fantastic. That well, is great. Yeah, right. The process Neil is all we have. Right. Sorry. Neil sorry. Said, Sharon, are you from Woodstock? Yes, I am from Woodstock. Yep. Nice. Woodstock, Ontario. There you go. That's awesome. So, Sharon, I'm curious. You got started playing piano. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> and so hated it. She hated I want, it. I know. I want to hear that from her because I had a very similar experience. I started on piano when I was seven. And okay. I was like, oh, my God, these exercises are killing me. I want to get drums. I want to rock out. Oh, when, it's so funny. Yeah. When I was, when I was, go ahead. Oh, no, yeah. So I, I started piano lessons when I was about seven or so. Uh, my parents bo put both my brother and I in piano lessons, and we both hated it. So mm -hmm. what I did was that I actually was like, I'm going to change my piano keyboard to the drum set settings. <laughs> and it hit me. <laughs> the, drums, the drums are way cooler. So then I would like play the drums on my piano, and then my parents would be like, 
who, what are you doing? And then I, did, I would change it. I'm like, I'm, I'm practicing piano. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I would do. I was like, I know. That's awesome. <laughs> that's, the, that's the mark of a true drummer. The mark yes. of a true drummer is there it is. You turn oh, anything yeah. you can into a drum set. Yes. <laughs> hundred percent. My parents were like so confused why I would be like hitting the piano, but it's because I wanted to play the drums. <laughs> so, yeah. And so, yeah. so once you got serious about drumming, did you find a teacher, local teacher that you studied with? Uh, yes and no. So I actually started drumming, uh, like self-taught, like on YouTube videos, mm -hmm. actually from Mike Johnston, uh, way back when, when he was doing, mm -hmm. uh, just, uh, Mike's lessons, uh, mm -hmm. on YouTube for free. So I mm -hmm. actually had learned from him back when I was about, uh, 12, uh, or so. And then I actually joined a drum, uh, well, it was actually more of like a band or a rock band studio where I learned how to play drums, uh, from there. And then actually right after that, I ended up like uh, getting some other uh, musicians who were in that studio uh, to form a band. And that's kind of how I grew up was learning how to play drums in a band and learning songs on my own. I didn't actually get a formal, formal, formal teacher until the last year of high school. So I was probably about 17 or 18. So uh, that was when I started getting like a formal teacher for lessons. And then uh, I had a formal teacher for about uh, maybe five years or so. So. And you still oh, take wow. lessons? I do. So I actually te take nice. lessons from Emmanuel Caplet as well as oh. uh, Juan Carlito Mendoza. Um, oh, wow. So I've taken like a, a few lessons from Dorothea Taylor, uh, Grayson Recruitment as well. Um, and then I also am a, I'm actually a part of uh, Mike's lessons as well too. Uh, so I uh, will will uh, learn stuff from there too. So. Um, yeah, I kind of I like to kind of learn uh, and just challenge myself in different areas. Like I, because I again, I, I know that I'm not perfect as a drummer, and so I'm a learner more than I am a teacher. I like to learn things as well. So um, that's kind of my uh, main thing <laughs> is to I learn. Think, I think that's a great way to model for your students too, because you know we're all. I, I like to I like to tell my students that I'm a student too, right? Forever right. we'll be students of the instrument, right? right? There's so much yeah. to learn from so many different sources, and it sounds like you're you're doing a great job motivating your 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 students, not just from your teaching, but by showing them, you know, the way to to keep improving. Thank so, you. So yes, much. lead by example. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I I just try my best, and yeah, it's 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 been a lot of fun doing that. So, <laughs> yeah. That's great. Hey, sure. When the when the camera's not on and nobody's near you, and you're completely alone with your drum set, and you've got some music and you want to play, what music are you playing for yourself? What, what's your favorite kind of music to play? I love playing uh, music from Dirty Loops. Uh, Dirty Loops. Yeah, Dirty Loops, yeah. They're like a funk fusion band, uh, and I just love them. And then like, I also really like playing to Megan Trainer and Bruno Mars. <laughs> so like, nice. I I like pop and stuff like that too. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, those are kind of like my main uh, go tos for fun when I play. Have drums. you guys have you guys heard of Dirty Loops? They're fantastic. I've got their CD. They're awesome. Like I love their yeah their syncopated grooves and funk stuff is amazing. It's really great. Nice. So, yeah, that's awesome. Uh huh. To check it out for sure. I watched them. Um, I watched one of your videos this morning, uh, Sharon, of the uh, the double bass on a single bass trick that you do with the 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 heel toe and then double on the floor tom. Uh -huh. That was fantastic and and very um you know very rudimental. Are you big on teaching the rudiments and working the rudiments yourself and stuff like that in your practice time? Yeah, for sure. So like one of the main things that I actually give my students initially is I actually give them a page of the 40 essential rudiments. And then we work through them just depending on what level they're at. Like if they're seven years old and just starting versus if they're 50 or 60 and like I've been playing for a number of years, I, I apply them in different ways, obviously, and I uh, try to uh, try to cater the rudiments to whatever uh, level that they're looking for. Um, so yeah, I try. Yeah. So we, we go through all those rudiments and uh, we talk about like uh, just how to apply them in a drum groove or drum fills uh, and things like that. And yeah, it, that's how we kind of open up some things that way. That's fantastic. Yeah, I really enjoyed that video a lot. I really like that heel toe thing you do. It's like, okay, I, I was sitting there going, uh, uh. So I took a lesson with you this morning. Thank you very much. Oh, I'll send you 50 bucks by Venmo, okay? You're welcome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> cool.
All sure, right. what about live performance? I know you're in, in lockdown, but do you have a, a specific band that, that you work with? Um, so I actually play for a wedding company called DCF Weddings. So that's the main like uh, band that I play with uh, through the year. However, because of lockdown, we haven't really had many weddings happening. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of been on hold uh, for right now. But uh, we do have some weddings anticipated if things uh, start reopening again. But yeah, DCF Weddings is the company I play for. So. Man, wedding gigs are the bomb, aren't they? Mm, yes. I love them. You're in nice places. It's a celebration. Yeah. Right. What, what uh, do you like best about wedding gigs? I think I just love the energy of people dancing and having fun. And our band leader is really good about interacting with the crowd. And then also he'll like kind of look at me and get me to do a drum solo. And I, I think it's yeah. like fun to throw sticks and, you know, do stick tricks for the crowd and kind of involved mm -hmm. them that way. They, they seem yeah. to enjoy that. And having the other instruments do solos as well is super fun. So I love yep. just the engagement between the crowd and the band. It's it's so much fun, I, I find. I love it. And then you have to learn all types of music. That's another yeah. great aspect of wedding gigs. And For sure, yeah. I, yeah. I think there was an era like, oh, you're playing wedding gigs. Now it's like, bring on all the wedding gigs. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You're yeah. playing for people who want to have the best day of their lives, right? Yeah. And all their friends want to right. have a great time and a memorable party. It's like you've right. got an audience all warmed up. It doesn't matter what you play <laughs> as long as you bring the energy, right? Yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I definitely yeah. find that for sure. So That's cool. Hey, That's Sharon, cool. how do you prepare for your wedding gigs? Do you have like a, a set routine you go through when you're preparing for a gig? Yeah, so I uh, I actually put all of the songs that – uh, we might or probably will run through uh, for the evening uh, on a playlist. And I'll actually just sit with my headphones and listen to that throughout the evening. Um, and kind of like, I don't always have a drum set on me. So like, I'll just kind of tap away uh, to like different grooves if I need to figure out a fill. Uh, initially, what I would do is I would like write out like specific parts, like if there were drum fills that I needed to know that were pretty iconic to that song. Um, but like now we've like played a lot of the songs repetitively that it kind of is more of just now listening to the music and internalizing it that way. Um, right so on. I do that. Yeah. And then what I'll do after that is after I've done like listening to the songs for a couple hours, I'll actually just like, uh, uh while I'm driving to the gig, we'll just turn off my music and just be in silence and kind of just process what I'm, uh, what I've listened to to. So that's, you, my, that's what I do. I don't know. You, yeah. You use, you use charts at all, Sharon? Um, I, yeah, I used to, uh, and like would write my own, but now I, I don't for these gigs. Cause again, like they just, we've repeated them a lot and the band leader kind of do, does the same things and I can kind of catch his cues as to what we're doing next and whatnot sure. now. So, uh, but if, you got, yeah. if you got a call for a band that you hadn't played with before and they said, Hey, we need you in a week and you've got to learn 15 or 20 tunes, would you use charts? Um, so I would write my own, uh, most mm -hmm. likely and like just kind of map out what, uh, right. the different sections of the songs are and whatnot. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I would probably have my iPad with me and just kind of just to remind myself as to what the shots and the cues are and whatnot too. But yeah, uh, I have not like, I'll bring my iPad with me with a, I have an air turn as well to flip the pages with my feet as I drum. So oh, cool. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. So Sharon, have you had to use any electronic percussion for the wedding gig? I haven't yet. I'm actually yeah. uh, trying to save some money to get a Roland, uh, like, uh, 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 is it the, it's the Octopad? It's, it's the uh, Octopad SPD 30. That's right. Okay. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Yep. So I've been wanting to get one of those uh, to be able to do wedding gigs for electronic. Cause I've actually had some artists who have asked me if I could just bring an electric, um, like an Octopad basically, but yeah. I've had to turn them down because I, I don't have that and it's expensive. So, um, but, uh, yeah, that is definitely on my radar for the future. So, uh, that, that's what I'm hoping to kind of do too. Cause I've, I've also actually oh. had some students ask me to teach them how to do stuff like that, but I, I've had the same thing. I've just said, Oh, I don't have that. So, but, um, yeah, like that's on my radar for the future for sure. So, sure. Yeah. I've got a question for you. I'm always curious to hear about how people got started teaching lessons because you oh. seem like this isn't, you know, there are some people we've come across not, not on in that we've interviewed, but I know we've all run into them in our lives who teach just to kind of make a little bit extra money. It's not really what they like to do. They really want a gig. Um, mm -hmm. But we are all, you know, passionate, dedicated teachers, just like you. Mm -hmm. And 
I know that there's something different that people who are really dedicated to teaching impart to their students. And I'm just curious because you seem like you got it going on. How did you get started teaching? Uh, okay, so yeah, that's a really good question. So I actually just love teaching in general. It doesn't have to be the drums. I really like the idea of having to explain things to different people or if they don't understand me mm -hmm. having to figure out a different way or a unique way to explain it to them. So mm -hmm. that's, that's always actually been something I've loved to do. Like since I was a kid, I would uh, teach stu students uh, beside me how to understand a math problem by me trying to figure it out and then figure out a way that I could uh, reiterate what I was learning. So uh, that, that kind of was already ingrained in my head when I was a young kid and so the opportunity came up for me to teach drum lessons when I realized I loved playing the drums and then I thought well I guess it would make sense that I would love something like the drums and then love teaching it because I can just put those together and so when I was about 12 years old I started actually advertising uh mm -hmm. teach drum lessons on Kijiji like it's just wow. like like wow. yeah it's a website to like uh, sell stuff and whatnot. And then I also uh, told my mom who worked at a daycare, if there was any uh, students who are looking for drum lessons that I would give it at a discounted rate because I just wanted the experience of it. And so that's kind of how it started. And then it became word of mouth from there. So, so you started yeah. teaching when you were 12 years old. Yeah, I was 12. Wow, and, uh, awesome. yeah, was, wow. yeah, and then I and then I was hired actually at the music studio that I went and like went to when I was 13. So I actually was a drum teacher officially when I was 13 years old. So Wow. Um, wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Good Thank you. Wow. Way Thank to you. go. That's outstanding. <laughs> That's, inspiring. That's great. That's very <laughs> inspiring. That's really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely love teaching. It's honestly my dream job and I uh, I can't believe I get to do it as my job now. So it's, it, yeah, it's great. <laughs> so right there, you said that this studio that you're at is in your house. Do you teach just in your house? And I know you do online, but is are all your lessons in home or do you have like a studio that you go to and you teach out of or how yeah, does that no, work for you? It's, it's all actually right here. So we've uh, kind of transformed our basement so that it's all the drum studio. Uh, so I teach in person when we've been able to uh, here. And then I just teach from the same drum set uh, online. So just like how you guys are seeing me right now, this is actually my setup for like teaching lessons uh, this way as well. So like I'll kind of just turn and explain and and stuff like that. So yeah, that's great. Can you can that's you tell us a little bit about your gear? What's your what's your basic go to drum set include? Yeah, so I have like so I have the Gretsch Catalina Club kit, uh, and so I have a ten inch uh, up here. Got 13, 13 <laughs> snare. I got the uh, Groove Ride uh, Sabian cymbals. Uh, hey, me too. Yeah, That's one of Rick's, favorites. One of Rick's favorites. Yeah, it's I love this symbol so much, and uh, it's actually my favorite symbol besides yep. this one, which is the double HX uh, medium hats. Uh, oh, oh, that's what I got right yeah. here. Yeah. That's what I'm playing right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys sound like a Sabian commercial. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> they are. Yeah. The Sabian Educators Network. Yeah, uh, yeah right. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so that's actually my main setup. So I just do a, a four-piece uh, kit here, and uh, that's, like, my main thing. Uh, periodically, I'll put in another, like, a second tom, but mainly I do this this setup here. So I'm a uh, the minimalist setup myself. four-piece and not the five? What's that? Sorry? Is there a reason that you're choosing four-piece, not the five? I mean, I, I like yeah. the four-piece. Yeah, so honestly, it's actually because I I – when I do stick tricks, I actually mainly will throw sticks like from in front of me. Um, and so if I have the second Tom, I tend to hit it. Uh, <laughs> that's literally the reason. And uh, it was actually just like that when I was a kid. I, I just noticed that. So I just took it off when I was younger and have just been playing like that ever since. So, uh, <laughs> do, you, do you know that cool. in, in the drummer's education connection today is one of the pr best stick trick performers in the country? I do. I know. Ah, world, world. In the yeah. world. Are you world. kidding me? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. World. On the planet. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I know you from that plug there. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. Twitter. Yeah. 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 I've seen Chip's uh, videos a lot, actually. So I've actually had people send them to me a lot. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> he's awesome. So, <laughs> yeah. He love Chip. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys, I've got um, Sharon's video, wedding video queued up. 
Can I oh, play that for you now? Let's it. do it. Let's see it. Let her right. Get ready to feel like you got to get to the shed and practice, folks. This was yeah. not a wedding. This was your wedding, right? This was your wedding, right? Yes, it was my wedding. <laughs> All right. Let's wow. see if this one works. That's Let me know if you can hear this one. Can you hear it? Nope. Nope. No. 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 Oh, man. All right. Hold on. I'm going to put my mic up to the speaker. Hold on one second. This is so cool. This is like a viral video. There's very, there's many instances of this video out there. Yes. Yeah. Okay, you guys can't talk now because I'm cranking my volume way up. So you're gonna be screaming into the thing. Hold on, here you <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Hey, man. <laughs> Bring that band in. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> hey, man. That was outstanding. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> So that reminds me of, if you guys, uh, if you guys know what uh, you guys know, Jimmy Ford from Ford Custom yep. Drums. Yep. Okay. Uh, his his logos, you know, his name's Jimmy Ford, so Ford Custom Drums, and his thing is, have you driven a band lately? That right there is the epitome of driving a band. That was awesome. <laughs> that was fantastic. You make it so fun, Sharon. That was awesome, man. Way to I mean, go! Thank As you if, so much. Were, were yeah. you nervous to do that at your wedding? I mean, you're already nervous just because it's your wedding yeah. day, right? Yeah. You know what? So. Actually, what's funny is that that's a very small clip as to what the whole performance was. Like, I was nervous for the whole performance because I, I actually was supposed to, like, not supposed to, but I was actually singing as well and playing the drums. And so to do that and, like, <laughs> we had four songs that, like, those were, that was a song that we wrote. Like, all of the songs we did, we wrote those. And, like, I was nervous just to perform that because I, I wasn't sure if I was going to remember the lyrics because we, um, oh uh, we had written the songs, like, maybe three weeks prior to the wedding. So, like, I was actually more nervous for that. The drum solo, I, I actually had a lot of fun with. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. Like, it was, it was a lot of fun to do that. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of a cool celebration thing because we did that as we walked in into the reception. So was your yeah. was your drum solo improvised or had you practiced separate parts of it before? Or how did that work? So the drum solo like was uh, partly improvised and then partly planned. Like I uh, I knew the certain things that I wanted to do within the solo, and my husband now uh, like we practiced like a little bit of it um, uh, before the wedding, but we actually never really got a chance to do the whole thing until that wedding day. So <laughs> yeah, was, was your I, husband? I, we were just kind of thinking like, oh, we'll do this part and I think we'll just put that together. So <laughs> I saw some of those Dennis Chambers symbol crossovers. That was yeah, really cool. Yeah, really that awesome. was cool. I thought I thought the same thing. That was like cool. Um, was, <laughs> Sharon, was your husband in the band too? 
So he was the one doing the guitar solo. Yeah. Guitar so, solo. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. So he was the electric cool. guitarist there. <laughs> so, so when you guys registered for your wedding, did you register at Guitar Center? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Oh, yeah. oh man! Yeah, I wish. Yeah, yeah. Skip the blender and the, and the other, you know, household yeah. stuff. We just want like distortion pedals and cymbals and exactly. Yeah. I don't want it. I don't need a toaster, man. Right. But I need a new right. superphonic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, so Sharon, so what's what's on the horizon for you, and what and what goals do you have? I I, I see you having unlimited potential. Oh, thank you. I, so I was actually just chatting with my husband about this, like this past week, like I actually am hoping to uh, write kind of my own drum book as well in the future. It's been yep. something that I've wanted to do for a while. And uh, yeah, so I've been uh, like, again, so I use guitar pro to write out my drum music. And so oh. when I'm uh, teaching theory or helping students to understand like reading notes and different things like that. I actually also like uh, transcribe uh, that as well as songs that they want to learn too. Like if there's something specific, I'll, I'll write that out. And so I've kind of just been collecting stuff over the years and I've been kind of mm -hmm. wanting to sort through that to make a, a yep. drum method book for young, young kids actually is kind of more what I'm looking for. So let, uh, let me go ahead and let me go ahead and, and send you an open invite right now. You're talking to four authors as well. So our door is always open. If there's anything we can do to help you, just say the word message us anytime. That's one of the good things about the Drummer's Education Connection. Awesome. I really appreciate that. I'll definitely take you guys up on that. Like I, yeah. Do that. yeah. Chip, Chip specifically has written a kid's, uh, a kid's uh, snare drum book called Snare Force yeah. One, which is really, really, great. really good. Book. Yeah, really awesome. good book. I'll have to send you a copy, get your opinion on it, get a quote from you. Sure. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Cool. Yeah, we're all about supporting. So what's, your, supporting. What's, your, what's your book going to have in it? T tell us more about your book. What are you looking at getting done? Yeah. So, like, I, I honestly want to just go through the basics and, like, uh, you know, different parts of the drum set to start off with. And, hey, this is where the hi-hat is, snare and kick and whatnot. Um, but I'm also wanting it to be very, like, illustrative, like, more for kids who want to, like, uh, look at drum music as a visual. Um, and so that's what I'm actually hoping to do um, is to have like, you know, pictures of the snare drum, pictures of the hi-hat, pictures of the kick drum, um, and to have different drum beats and uh, kind of show kids how to read that way. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going for. So currently when I teach kids who are around four years old, I actually use a lot of colors um, because I know that, you know, they're they're really starting to learn about colors and shapes and things like that at a young age. And so what I actually do is I put like colored tape on different pieces of my drums. So like oh, green tape cool. and blue tape and whatnot. And then I'll actually have like those same pieces of tape on my music stand and have them like combined. So like a green piece of tape, blue piece of tape is the hi-hat and the kick drum together. So I'll get them to hit both of those at the same time and oh, stare cool. and hi-hat and then they're, they're doing a drum beat and they don't even know it. Right. They're, like three or four years old. So uh, I want to do something like that where it's like very like colorful and like, yeah, like um, that's, that's kind of what I'm going for. So uh, yeah, something fun and yeah, a visual for young kids. Cool. Well, that's that's a great idea. Cool. I love the scary part of learning to read music away for those little kids, right? They can just exactly. associate with things that they connect to already shapes and colors. Yeah. Yes, that's great. Sure. Really smart. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So we'll okay. see how it goes. It's kind of like, obviously like just brainstorming right now, but it's been in my brain uh, for a while too. Uh, so yeah. we'll we'll that's how it works. That's how it works. I think with all of us, I mean, we had ideas for books that floated around. We talked about them and then a couple years later, they finally come together. So just that's keep, awesome. keep going with it. Yeah. Okay. Bouncing Thank it off. You. Yeah. That's great. Awesome. Hey, Sharon, I see that you got a guitar hanging on your wall. Do you play the guitar also? I, yes, I do actually. I play guitar. Uh, and yeah, I, yes. <laughs> um, my main wow. instruments are actually the drums and the bass and uh, guitar. So those are my my main things. I just I actually kind of uh, fizzled out teaching guitar lessons though because I I wanted to focus on drum lessons. But um, yeah, I I used to teach guitar lessons as well. So and do you find that being a guitarist and a bass player helps you be a better drummer? Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's it's really helpful too, just to be able to communicate 
uh, to the the band as well when they know oh Sharon's a bassist as well so I can kind of say hey like uh, just watch the way I'm kicking uh, my kick drum here and uh, and stuff for the chorus or whatnot mm -hmm. so yeah we had we had Mitch Marine on a couple of weeks ago he plays drums for Dwight Yoakam and he talked about there was a period of his career where he stopped playing drums and focused on playing bass. He's a really good bass player. And he said right away, as a bass player in a band, he realized, you know, what not to do as a drummer because maybe the drummer would do something. And he's like, oh, wait a second. That didn't work for me at all. You know, see, so yeah. I think you, you, like you said, you learn how to communicate. That's, yeah. that's great. What do you, do you try to, communicate that to your students from another instrument's point of view like you know for you sure. don't want to do this because of the bass player you might derail him or something like that yeah for sure so one of the big things that i do here is i actually uh offer my students to do jam sessions so i kind of make that a requirement as part of their lessons uh if they're in person uh, and so what we do is that I'll actually play the bass or I'll play the guitar and then they'll be on the drum set. And I'll be like, okay, you learned uh, the basic rock beat, which is awesome. But I want you to hear what it sounds like in when I play the bass guitar, like listen to how that uh, works together. So that's why we need to be on the same uh, speed. Uh, so why, that's why we practice with a metronome. Uh, that's why we uh, play this uh, groove because it works really well with what I'm playing as a bass guitarist. So um, I do that with my students so that they can understand what it sounds like to play drums in context with another instrument because I know that that's how drummers will usually get gigs, right? Is being able to play with other people. So um, I try to do that uh, for, for my students uh, when they when they come here in person. So, yeah. That's yeah. great. What's the, what's the youngest age that you take? Um, so the youngest that I take right now is four years old. Uh, I am in the process of like, this is kind of in the future as well, but uh, right now it's four years old, but I'm hoping in the future that I can kind of take uh, even younger than that, because uh, I was wow. hoping to kind of do like a drumming uh, music focused daycare uh, as well here. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. that's what I'm thinking of in the future. So we'll see how that goes too. But it's, it's something that I've been uh, kind of coming up with some ideas for as well to come up with um, like my own program uh, to do that. So yeah, but right now it's four years old though. That's a great idea. Wow. That's really cool. I like that. That's That's awesome. Drumming hey, Sharon, do you use some phonetics with those younger kids? You know, mm -hmm. like the, the, the one end is a barbecue, barbecue. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So I'll do like uh, pepperoni, like, or like uh, popcorn for eighth notes. So yeah, I definitely yeah. do that. I actually, uh, I don't know if you guys saw some of my videos on YouTube too, but I have costumes, like an egg costume and like a ketchup costume and like really <laughs> fun <laughs> costumes that I, I have. And what I do is for young students, I'll dress up as an egg and I'll say, all right, we're going to learn about triplets, but they don't know that. I'll say omelet. And then I'll say, we're going to play that on the drum. So omelet, omelet, <laughs> Oh, I love it. <laughs> They're oh, like, gosh. are you an egg? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so I'll do stuff like that. And then um, another thing too, is that for the older students, like I'll be like, okay, you know about triplets. So omelet is the word I use. Uh, but let's try to make that as a linear fill. So we'll do left, right, kick, and we'll do that around the kick. Kit. So left, right, kick, left, right, kick, and we get faster. And that's that's a triplet, right? But we're saying the word omelet, omelet, omelet. So that that's how I how I kind of try to keep it fun too for the young kids, though. So that's great. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. That works that perfect for me because my friends call me an egghead. So <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. So you, you don't need a costume, Bart. I don't need a costume. I just do it. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. That is great. That is that's outstanding. That's hey, really Sharon, cool. I, I see you're wearing a, a, a t shirt that is your studio. Oh, yeah. It's got yeah, your logo yes. on it. That's yeah, a really, that's really sharp t shirt. Where, did you design you. it yourself? Yeah, I actually, this is a, a new set of shirts that came in a few weeks ago. So, nice. uh, yeah, so it's that. Um, but but the other one that I actually have that is our main one is this logo with a darker shirt. And then it says on the back, drummer. The definition is people who hit things and don't get in trouble for it. So, <laughs> uh, so that's the so shirt that we have here. So. Oh, I got to get one. You yeah. got to get one of those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it's on the website. It's just ransomdrumlab.ca. So feel free. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah no, that's good. To, to, yeah. So when if people want to find out more about you and your studio and your teaching and your projects, can you tell that website one more time? 
for sure. So it's ransomdrumlab.ca. And so you can actually go there for registering for lessons. You can buy merch if you'd like or hear more about my story and everything there too. So uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. And then it actually has attached to it my Facebook and my Instagram as well. Very cool. That's awesome. Hey, Bart, Bart, do we have Very a drum cool. head to give away today? Uh, we do. I'm going to let Chip pick out our lucky winner today. Hey, real quick, before we do that, though, real quick, since you found out a hack to play the video and get the audio up, can you play that the Canadian one real quick, Jeremy? Do you, I don't want to put you on the spot. Can you play that? Put your microphone up so everybody can yeah. see that again. With the, is that doable? I, I'll try. It's the first one we were trying to watch. Yeah, that was the first one. The audio didn't come through, and, and oh. I think that's just outstanding. To no, uh, let me try it. Hold on. We're live, unedited. We keep it real, and it keeps it spontaneous and fun. <laughs> By the way, Sharon, you mentioned that this video just was released today. It's already got a thousand views. Oh, really? Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's great. Oh, that makes me want to go to Canada and take a drum lesson. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, right. You get? Do you have it? Working on it. Sorry, Jeremy. Didn't mean to put Sharon, you on the spot. Well, yeah, while no he's problem. finding that, what oh, kind here of we go. Is, oh, here it is. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it went back to full screen, I think. Yeah, it says click exit full screen. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> uh, Kelly Ray Tubbs said, it's so great to see uh, Sharon as your guest. She is she is so sharp. That is that is really, yeah. really, really, really. Yeah. Yeah. That's. So we she's got, a, I'm sorry. No, I just said she's a big fan. She's a big fan, so that's cool. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got we've got your drum students, and they're out there playing, and they're looking at videos on YouTube. And again, one of the things that I think is so great about you is your positive attitude and how you encourage people to not compare themselves with others in negative ways, but to really realize that they're special and unique. Can you tell me just a little bit more about how you do that with yourself? Because I know that. Uh, one of the big things about Drummer Girls United is they're so supportive, and sometimes there's trolls on Facebook and the internet that'll that'll leave negative comments behind. How do you deal with negative comments? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. So, um, yeah, so personally speaking, one of the things that I personally get made fun of a lot on uh, social media is my weight. Actually, when I I play drums, I get a lot of people who think, oh, like that's a really active and physical instrument, and she's really big like how is she able to do that like i'll get comments like that pretty often and i had to get to a point where i had to realize just the reality that there's a lot of people on the internet who say things because they're behind a keyboard and they have the confidence to be able to make fun of other people uh, yeah. because they're able to be um invisible essentially right like you yeah. can't see them personally and have them face to face so they hide behind a keyboard and i've had to come to a point where i had to realize that um, some of these people have much bigger issues than I can even imagine or even fathom. And uh, yeah. there's things going on underneath that if they're willing to say stuff like that uh, through a keyboard, I'm sure that there's a lot of other things that are happening within their life. And so mm. I've actually kind of turned instead of being hurt and like, obviously it's still hurtful, but at the same time I've had to be like, you know what? I, 
now have almost a mindset of being compassionate and just wanting to like care for that person. And I, I feel sad uh, for the people who have to say negative things in order to lift themselves up because I realize that, you know, there are there are definitely people who are like that. And so what happens is, when I think like that is that it actually changes my attitude so that instead of yeah. me wanting to lash back out on them and be like, oh, I hate you or and it, like that doesn't help at all. And I already know that I, what I do is I go, OK, I accept that they've commented that way. And I go, you know what, I'm I'm ups I'm upset. But I'm also going to realize that I can choose my reaction as to how I respond to these comments and my reaction. Yeah. I'm, I'm just not going to engage and I'm just going to move on and focus on the people who are supportive and encouraging and the people in my life that love and care and encourage me uh, in my drumming and just in my life. So because uh, those are the people that actually matter, right, is the ones who uh, walk alongside you and uh, who love you. And, and these people who I don't even know, I, I'm not going to take their comments to heart. Um, right. Because, right? Well done. You're, you're there very, it is. You're, yeah. You're very wise. You're very yeah. wise, Darren. Thank you. Yeah. I yep. see that. Yeah. So those people right. have done a favor for you because it's helped you to become more evolved and more mature. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And that's so true. Anybody, anybody can be, you know, usually it's just somebody that's a bully, you know, and usually, I mean, now you're getting into psychology, but when somebody's lashing out, they're usually looking at issues within themselves and yeah. you've chosen to sit behind the drums, pick up the pair of sticks and do it. You know, I, I, I'm sure somewhere inside of them, they wish they could do the same thing. Sharon, I've got another question yeah, for you. Right. you you've, you've done these really wonderful drum collab videos from Ransom Drum Lab, where you have all these students, a lot of students playing on the same track. And what goes into your uh, preparation for that? How do you pick out which song that you want them all to get on? And how do you get the different students? That, obviously, they're at different levels. How mm -hmm. do you get them all on the same page to do a drum collab? For sure. Yeah. So, um, so it, it kind of depends on like the song, but I try to choose something that uh, is around generally uh, the student's level. Um, and then I'll adjust the drum beat uh, depending on if uh, the student is more of a beginner or kind of more advanced and can uh, add more stuff to it. Um, but basically what I do is like, um, I will get the, I will teach all of the students uh, the drum beat and I have the music for them as well as I actually, uh, I don't know if I could like pull it up too, but I actually do a YouTube uh, drum cover with the music on the screen uh, for all of my students that I want to do the drum collab for or collab to. And I send That's all cool. the students, yeah, this uh, tutorial video as to how to play it in case they need a reminder. And it'll have the music on it and it'll have verse and then chorus and four, three, two, one, bridge like so I, I have it all oh, like edited cool. that way so that each student can uh, play the the song through the week and practice and then when they come for weekly lessons we can work on it together um, and so that's kind of how I go about it and uh, if there are students who are still you know doing a beginner level I'll actually do a recorded video uh, separately of the basic rock beat or a simpler beat that they can play along to but at the same speed of the song so that's how how I go about that that's Very awesome. Cool. Do you have do you find that some of the students are really nervous before recording it? And if so, how do you encourage them? For sure. Like, I mean, uh, yeah, so a lot of my students will well, it's actually half will record it here, uh, and then half will record it at their own home. Um, I do find that I will get messages later saying that students have um uh, had to re-record re their video because they were nervous and stuff like that. But I always send an email out and always tell the students uh, when I'm recording them that, uh, you know, this is this is for fun and I want you to enjoy this. And we can take as many takes as you would like to. Like, I'm not in a rush. So I, I kind of just help them to feel relaxed that way and uh, not put any pressure on them. And also, if there are students who don't want to do it, I just tell them that that's okay. And we work on uh, something else instead. So... Nice, uh, nice. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. That's, I love uh, how positive you are. You're just like a ray of sunshine. It's really uh, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. It's like you and Rick took the same pills. <laughs> <laughs> they, have the same, they have the same smoothie every morning. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, it's a compliment to put me in the category of Sharon. Oh, that's so sweet. It's a compliment for both of you. You guys are both oh, just raising. Yeah, and that's awesome. Yeah, you guys are both cool. inspirations. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Sharon, we can't thank you enough for joining us. Yes. And thank you so much for, for being on. Yeah. We would love to have you back in the future. You know, we, we do round tables on drummers education connection. Okay. We like to do interviews and then every once in a while we'll get a, a bunch of drummers together and we'll, we'll do a go round on a, any drum topic and we call it all hands on deck. Awesome. And love to have you back on that and then, and then follow up with you down the road and, and uh, follow your adventures. Awesome. I would love that for sure. Thank you so if much anybody, for having me. Yeah. Anybody interested in taking a lesson with Sharon, don't forget to visit ransomdrumlab.ca. Ransomdrumlab.ca and go check it out. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We have oh, a we winner have a for head. the drum head. We have the drum uh -oh. head winner. Yes. 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 I, uh, so, uh, Kathy Smoller. Kathy Smoller. Oh, Kathy, yeah. Kathy Smith. Smoller. Smoller. S O S M O L E R. Yeah. There oh, you go. Why, why, Kathy? All right. Kathy That's won the drum head. So, Kathy, reach out to us on Drummers Education Connection and uh, get us your address, and we will get a drum head to you. So, awesome. so Sharon, do you, do you have like a motto or any parting advice that you would give any drum teachers watching this? Any? Oh, that's a hard question. Or students? Uh, I would say. Or students, uh, yeah. Like any parting advice. Parting advice. You know what? I would probably just say the same thing that I say to my students. It goes the same way when it comes to drum teaching. Don't compare to anyone else. Like you are your own unique person who comes with your own abilities and experiences. And you have something to offer students for sure. Like don't doubt that and understand that you're uh, constantly learning as well and, and take that to value. So I would say great. that. <laughs> great. Nice. great advice. Thank you. Very well done. Very well Thanks, done. Thanks, Sharon. It's been a pleasure to, to meet you and have you on. Thanks yeah. for joining us today. Thank you so it much. It has been an honor. Thank, thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. All right. All right. What do we got on, on tap for next week? On tap for next week is Bobby Jones Armback from Sebastian wow. Bach, and he's currently playing with a country artist called George Strait. George Strait. George Strait. And he was yeah. with uh, Fate's, Fate's Warning, too, way back in the day. Fate's Warning. He's... He's a head cutter. Metal. He's just a monster drummer, and I'm really wow. looking forward to talking with him. Wow. Right. That's awesome. Fantastic. Oh, that's that's going to be a great week. Have a great week, everybody. Cool. Thank hey, you everybody. for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Sharon. Woo! We'll Woo! see you next Woo! time. Thanks, Sharon. Listen to Elvis. Listen to Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh.